Welcome back, guys. As Caribbean people, we share a similar history. So a number of customs and traditions are the same. However, across the region, there are also unique experiences and ways of celebrating the Christmas holidays. Althea Brown is a cookbook author and a proud Guyanese who will fill us in on what it's like celebrating the holidays in her homeland. And to start, look at her earrings. She's nice already repping. <laughs> She's already repping. Hello, lady. <laughs> How are you? I gotta rep Guyana. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> How is it today? How is it typically there at Christmas time? I think in Guyana we have some of the overlapping traditions that we that you guys have in Jamaica, right? Like we'll have our black cake, we'll have our ginger beer, we'll have our sarrel. Um, but I think the thing that we do that most Caribbean countries don't do is that we have pepper pot, um, which is a rich meat stew that we have on Christmas morning. So that's our Christmas breakfast. Pepper pot and plat bread is Guyanese Christmas. What kind of bread, miss? Plat bread. So it's a Plat. braided black bread. It's a white bread, but it's braided into like a tree strand plat and then yes. served with the pepper pot. Let, Let me see if here, what we call it here. It's like duck, it's like a variety of duck bread. Yeah. Just how they bake it. Yeah. Okay, but what bread. I want to know is what's in your pepper pot soup because ours may be different. So what do you put in yours? Yeah, so mine isn't a soup, it's a stew and it's really dark and it's made with um hard cuts of meat so you can put oxtail in there if you want yeah. in guyana we put a lot of bones and then we put um like beef in there if you don't eat beef some people make it with goat some people make it with lamb but it really is the key ingredient in pepper pot is cas rib which is a dark um reduction from cassava juices so yeah. it's made by our indigenous people they boil down cassava juice until it's this really dark think about like browning but it's just made with cassava juice and that's the main ingredient in the in the um, pepper pot. So if you don't put that in your pepper pot, most people will say you're not making pepper pot, you're making stew. I've yeah. never heard that before. Never. Never heard that before. I know cassava turning into bamis, but never into a sauce like yeah. that. You know, that's interesting. Is that inside your cookbook as well? It's not in my cookbook. It is on my website, metmg.com, for free. There are several versions of it. You know, you can cook it in a pressure cooker, an instant pot, slow cooker, or the traditional way it's to cook it over several days on the stovetop. And really, like, people will start making it a couple of days before Christmas. So by the time Christmas Day, it's really been, like, marinated and really in those juices and fall off the bone tender meat. Mm, you're making me hungry. That's it. Stop. Come <laughs> You want some? You want some right now? It's so so yummy. Um, so, so what's the flavor profile of it? Because cassava kind of don't have no taste, ish. Yeah, but so. when you boil it down and you make this sauce, it has a rich like a little bit of bitter, a little bit of um, like tanginess because it's a slightly fermented sauce. However. Think of like brown stew chicken, right? Yes, and that's what I was actually thinking of. It has okay. that dark caramel. It has like yeah. a little bit of sweetness. This stew is also has um, cinnamon and cloves. And some people like to put a little bit of dried orange peel in there. So it has all of those flavors coming together in this really rich stew that you then eat with bread. Out there, it sounds like a medicine. Seriously, like when you say, <laughs> when you say dried, you know, uh, orange, orange peel and stuff like that, cinnamon and cloves, it sounds like it could actually cure you. That is interesting. Uh, and no, so here's, here's the funny thing about it. So we, we make enough to last us until new year's and we don't refrigerate it because like you just said the cassava extract that that concentrated cassava extract the cas rib actually keeps it from getting going bad it is uh, a preservative okay. so it just keeps the meat and that's what the indigenous people of guyana did when they made this dish and that's why you know it's part of our culture it's part of our history Let's talk a bit more about some of the other things outside of the food. So you guys have masqueraders in the streets, you have bands on the streets on we Christmas We have masqueraders. I, I haven't been home for Christmas in a long time, so I'm not sure how current that is. But when I was growing up, we absolutely had masqueraders in the street. Um, they would come in their costume. I just remember them having like a cow that they would come. Kids would freak out. Yeah, like John Cano. masquerade music and just have a good time. Yeah. And a lot of family come back home at this time of year, eh? 
Yeah, like Christmas at home is like no other. You know, just being there, you feel the like the streets are have all the vendors. They're selling all of the Christmas things. People are buying new curtains and cleaning their house and like getting everything brand new. And that just that feeling of celebrating um you you can't find it anywhere right you can't match it anywhere as being home and, and enjoying that so oh that's we're looking at photos <laughs> of your family everybody's in matching pajamas so cute. Yeah. so cute so <laughs> cute let's talk about the cookbook quickly because we're about to wrap up but is the cookbook yeah. something you pull on at this time of the year as well so my cookbook uh, came out in summer this year, um, so it came out in August, and it's just looking at Guyanese food in a, through a different lens. So it's all gluten-free, dairy-free, grain-free, because that's how I typically eat, but has all the same flavors of traditional dishes we know and love. What? Oh, nice. That sounds good. What's the name of it? Need our copy. Ask her that. What is the name of the cookbook? Yeah, it's called <laughs> Caribbean Paleo, and so it's... Caribbean and Guyanese food through a paleo lens. Oh. Caribbean, what you said, Althea? Paleo. 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 Yeah. Is, is, is that what you make um ton car meal? Is that? That sounds like palo. Oh yeah, it sounds close. No, that's palo, yeah. Okay, it sounds close, sorry, it's, it's something yeah. close. Paleo is a, it's a diet and it's similar to kind of like keto, but a little bit different. Ah, I see, I see, I see. Okay, and, and it's available where? So in the U.S. it's available everywhere and then it's also available on Amazon. Okay. All right. All Good right. to talk to you. Thank you so much Merry for... Merry Christmas. Yeah, for showing us yeah, Merry looks. Christmas. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Yes, Thanks for you. joining us. Cookbook author Althea Brown. After the break, guys, we have more fun stops. It's been a fun day. I mean, yeah. I can't take and any this more fun. Christmas. Bring it. Bring the fun. <laughs>